Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Silver Bullion Television SBTV. I'm your host, Stephen T, and today we're here for another Electric Vehicles Metals Market Update dated June 2021. And we'll be continuing our look back at some of the biggest stories that shaped the first half of this year, as we have been doing in recent episodes. Now, today's show, we're going to be focusing mainly on the most important drivers for growth and adoption in the EV metals industry and space, and how they may not just depend on the EV battery and the tech itself, but sometimes on the global supply chains as well. Now we'll be looking at all of this with a particular focus on nickel. And before we do, if you are new to this channel or have not yet done so, please hit the subscribe button as well as the bell button for notifications and updates from us. And feel free to give us a thumbs up or a like if you do enjoy what we do, because we truly do appreciate your support and always thank you greatly for it. Also, feel free to comment below because we love to hear from you and we'll endeavor to get back to you guys as soon as possible. Now, as we pick up from where we left off in our last episode, where we saw that demand for nickel in EV batteries is growing, we followed it up with this Northern Miners report from the Global Mining Symposium in May this year. The headline Demand for nickel in EV batteries could lead to supply shortage in the next couple of years, says McKinsey's Ken Hoffman. This article here by Carl A. Williams, dated May 22nd this year, begins by saying that the growing market for electric vehicles is likely to see increased pressure for nickel, a critical component for the nickel manganese cobalt NMC batteries used in EVs. Ken Hoffman, senior expert at McKinsey's Basic Materials Institute, said during the Northern Miners Global Mining Symposium in May. In an interview with Frick Ells, executive editor of Mining.com, Hoffman said that sales of EVs reached over 3 million units last year, up from around 22,000 a decade ago. If it weren't for a shortage of microchips in 2021, you'd probably be looking at 6 to 7 million EVs sold by the end of this year, he said. Last year, EV batteries consumed around 200,000 tonnes of nickel, with over 300,000 tonnes expected this year. Currently, about 20% to 25% of global nickel production is going into EVs as Class 1 products. So with nickel purity greater than 99.8% required, Class 1 products on this side provide the purity required for the EV batteries, and Class 1 products are the ones that we at Silver Bullion would carry. They're the ones needed for EV batteries. Class 2 products, on the other hand, are typically used to make stainless steel and alloys, and they're probably the most common form of nickel produced in market today. Now, if EVs or electric vehicles are to sit co-equally or even take over, from internal combustion engine vehicles or ICE vehicles, the, the, the traditional vehicles that we're used to today, as we know them today, then surely EV batteries will have to correspondingly become the new engines, or engines inverted commas, powering the vehicles. And elements in that engine, like nickel and lithium and so on, will have to sit alongside with electricity undergirding them as possibly becoming the new oil, the new fuel, the new gas. Um, but since class 1 nickel is relatively hard to obtain and source, is the nickel supply chain more complex than we might otherwise presume? Now, staying on the same article, Ken Hoffman adds that the current bottleneck on EV production is limiting demand for nickel. Once this bottleneck is alleviated or made less severe, there will be increased pressure on nickel supply chains, which could lead to shortages within the next couple of years. Now, this bottleneck that Ken Hoffman refers to is the global EV production slowdown due to supply chain issues. This article here by Canada's Financial Post tries to explain it from a Canadian perspective. The Financial Post headline, Trudeau's electric vehicle ambitions need strategic shift, Nickel CEO says, Beth the strategy needed to build up EV supply chain and become a North American battery hub. This article from Bloomberg News, Yvonne Uel Lee and Stephen Bakari starts by saying that Canada needs a better strategy to build up an electric vehicle supply chain and become a North American battery hub that takes advantage of a global push toward cleaner energy. And that's departing advice of Sherrod International Corporation's outgoing chief executive officer, David Path, and what he has for the Canadian government and an industry set to disrupt 
everything from mining to auto making. Further on in the article, Path goes on to say that historically Canada has been a supplier of raw materials to the world. I think Canada can aspire to be more than that, said Path, who hands over the top job at the Toronto-based nickel producer to Leon Bindell. There's a role to be played between the government and bringing all the participants in the industry, from project developers and miners to technology and research firms and processors to identify bottlenecks and help foster an EV battery industry. Now, while three automakers recently announced big electric vehicle investments in Ontario, Canada, being Canada's most populous province, the global auto industry and equipment manufacturers have relied heavily on Chinese companies to supply batteries and raw materials such as nickel and cobalt. The coronavirus pandemic highlighted the importance of securing supplies on a regional level and further strengthened Western countries' desire to end reliance on China. Now, coming back to the mining symposium for a minute, we know that in a post-pandemic world, nations and companies want and need to be self-reliant. That's understandable, and having been interconnected as a global system for so many years, that, however, may not prove to be so easy in and of itself. So while Canada wants to try and rely less on China, notice that at the symposium, Mr. Ken Hoffman added that China itself is sourcing nickel from elsewhere, be it under its Belt and Road Initiative or otherwise. Meanwhile, back at the mining symposium, Ken Hoffman noted that China and other countries like the United Arab Emirates are investing heavily in Indonesia to ensure reliable supplies of nickel. The problem for the West, however, is that there is a lack of smelters outside of Indonesia. Finding mines is a lot easier than having to put the US one to two billion dollars needed to build a smelter, Hoffman said. Further on, Hoffman notes, for example, that Tesla and Volkswagen are looking to source nickel powder, but current world production is only 30,000 to 40,000 tons per year. If suddenly you need 500,000 tons of nickel powder, where is it going to come from? Who's going to make it? And where is it going to be refined? Now, we saw in previous episodes that Tesla are developing batteries with nickel in their own gigafactories and R&D facilities and so on. Now, Tesla has warned that supply continues to be an issue that they're not taking for granted by any means. And we will have more on that in just a minute. But let's just see what the mining symposium discussion concluded with. The mining symposium discussion concludes by reporting that while nickel is excellent for making batteries, OEMs or original equipment manufacturers like Tesla are also exploring a basket of chemistries for batteries based on other metals, Hoffman said, including lithium ion manganese oxide, LMO, and lithium ion phosphate, LFP. The LFP technology has been around for over 40 years, Hoffman said. However, batteries that use LFP chemistries generate only about 170 watts of power per kilogram of battery weight, which is no different to where they were 10 to 15 years ago. The best-in-class high-nickel batteries, he said, operate at nearly twice that, at about 300 watts per kilogram of battery weight. So why is there so much talk about LFP batteries, Hoffman asked. It's partly about optionality. If around 3 to 4 million EVs consume 200,000 tonnes of nickel, then what happens when we get to a world with 80 to 100 million EVs? The global demand for Class 1 nickel will run to over 4 million tonnes, leading to supplies of nickel running out very quickly. Now, it's important to know why nickel is critical as an element in EV batteries. Granted, some investors may simply be investing in, investing, excuse me, in nickel because they simply want hard, secure assets, and that's obviously a very good thing. But some investors do also understand why nickel is valued so highly. It is because they understand that nickel is the key in achieving battery power. Now, according to Roskill's nickel market report on the Globe Newswire, the nickel market staged an impressive recovery since a COVID-19 low in March 2020 last year 
and the price rise was one of the strongest of all the base metals in 2020. Goes on to say that the reason for such a significant development in the market is that EV automotive manufacturers are opting for lithium-ion batteries with increasingly nickel-rich cathode chemistries in order to boost the battery's energy density and subsequently vehicle range on a single charge. So notice that line there. It's about nickel's ability to boost the battery's density and range. Now, investors might be aware that in the race to achieve widespread adoption, EV battery development in terms of power to last, and by that we mean power to last and increase uh, charging range for cars to travel longer distances. This then is seen as one of the keys in achieving what they call the market tipping point necessary for adoption. Staying on the Roskill report, Roskill forecasts that batteries share of primary nickel consumption will swell from 6% in 2020 to over a quarter by the end of the decade making inroads on the dominant stainless steel market. Future availability of battery-grade nickel feedstocks has long been highlighted as one of the key pinch points in the battery supply chain. So up till this point in time, we've seen that demand and supply are all at play here equally. We've also seen that one of the key factors in people deciding to switch from traditional IC vehicles to EVs ostensibly depends on how long a car can drive for. And Finally, we've seen that nickel is important in that provision of power. So all this coming together would explain why EV battery developers worldwide refuse to give up on nickel. And if Ken Hoffman is correct, as we suspect he is, then that would explain why everyone, including Tesla, is continuing their search for nickel worldwide. For example, Reuters reports that the world's largest nickel producer, Indonesia, received an investment proposal from Tesla and that this is official. This was in February this year. It says Indonesia has received an investment proposal from US electric vehicle maker Tesla and Indonesia being the world's biggest nickel producer, a material crucial for EV batteries, has been publicly wooing Tesla to invest in the country to help develop its ambitious EV and battery industry plans. The article goes on to say that Tesla has also played a part by saying that it was looking to find reliable sources of nickel globally after warning that the current cost of batteries remained a hurdle to its growth. Now, it can all work in reverse and in mutually beneficial ways as well between big tech giants and sovereign states and governments. It can go back and forth a bit like a romance or a dance. I don't mean to be facetious there, but setting aside arguments against fascism and like. In either case, there'll be a party that dangles the carrot to begin with, with an invitation to treat, so to speak. Or sometimes it'd be the EV tech giant that woos the nation state because it's interested in its resources, and makes a proposal to begin with. And in the global supply chain, we'll find that the mining companies, the EV tech giants, uh, and the regulatory bodies and governments, they're all intermingled and <clears throat> interdependent. Some nation states even play hard to get. Now, as we look at this article that was featured on the East Asia Forum by one Mr. James Gill of the RSIS, or Raja Ratnam School in Singapore, the headline goes, Indonesia plays hardball with its nickel. Goes on to say that nickel has become increasingly important beyond its traditional use in stainless steel manufacturing as the base metal is a key component in lithium-ion batteries, including the kind used in EVs. As the world's biggest automakers begin scaling up the production of EVs, nickel and the batteries it goes into are expected to be in high demand. With the largest reserves of nickel deposits in the world, Indonesia is no longer content to simply export its raw ore. Indonesia now wants to take a central position in the value-added links in the EV supply chain, from mining the ore to refining it to manufacturing the batteries and eventually to building the cars. And because Indonesia controls the raw input, it turns out it has a lot of leverage. One of the ways it uses that leverage, starving global markets of raw nickel turned out to be an effective strategy. From 2014 to 2020, over US $6.5 billion in foreign direct investment or FDI has flowed into the construction of nickel smelters and other downstream processing activities in Morowali Regency. Morowali is located in the nickel-rich central part of Sulawesi and is the site of an industrial park specifically earmarked for refining activities. Now, building up domestic refinery capacity in this manner 
had the effect that the government hoped for. Moreover, locally processed raw ore increases Indonesia's viability as a potential manufacturing hub for the real prize, the lithium-ion batteries that power EVs. Now, the article goes on to show some of the partnerships between the Indonesian state and government and system with some of the biggest EV giants and traditional automaking giants as well. It says in 2019, Toyota committed to investing $2, million, two billion, excuse me, better get it right, in the Indonesian auto manufacturing sector. Late in 2020, South Korea's LG Group signed an MOU or Memorandum of Understanding for Battery Production reportedly valued at US $9.8 billion. CATL, a major Chinese battery maker whom we've covered in previous episodes, has inked a US $5.1 billion deal to open a plant in Indonesia, while Korean Shebo Hyundai have a car factory valued at around US $1.5 billion and is already under construction in Chikarang on the outskirts of Jakarta, on the main island of Java. The factory is expected to produce EVs in the future as well. Now, to protect themselves, Tesla are one such EV giant, making sure they haven't put all their eggs in the one basket when it comes to nickel sourcing. They've been on a global hunt for partners worldwide. Tesla have been trying to ink deals not just with Indonesia, but also in New Caledonia, in Oceania, and of course, Australia. Other companies from Korea and China have been doing the same too. And we'll look at them more in detail in the next few episodes. Now, this article here from MiningGlobal.com by Daniel Brightmore is headlined, Tesla partners with New Caledonia to secure nickel supply. This was in March this year, and it says that EV maker Tesla will become a technical advisor at the New Caledonian nickel mine as part of the company's attempt to secure stocks of the essential battery metal nickel, reports Reuters. Now, previously, Brazilian mining giant Vale had made a decision to sell its nickel mine, including the Goro mine and processing plant to a consortium including Prony Resources and Swiss commodity trader Trafigur, among others, sparking fierce opposition from pro-independence groups in local communities, leading to violent protests, which then forced Vale to shut down the site in December. Tesla, however, are ignoring all of that and they're not going in politically, you would imagine. They're saying they're going in to act as an industrial partner to help with product and sustainability standards, as well as taking some supply for its battery production, according to a political agreement that they've signed. New Caledonia being the fourth largest nickel producer in the world. Now, what all this tells us, though, is that whilst we go to some of the major stories and offer only financial opinion and not financial advice on this show, what we do see is that nickel is important to Tesla and the EV manufacturers, um, so much so that Tesla are willing to go worldwide to find spots that they can sit even as advisors on just to get close to possible nickel opportunities for sourcing in the supply chain. Now we'll look more at Tesla and other related stories and companies like Xingshan in China in our next episodes to come, but I'm afraid that's our time for today. So until the next show, take care. Saddle up and silver up. Excited about the opportunities in the coming electric vehicle revolution and looking to invest in this electrification super cycle? Demand for battery metals like nickel and cobalt is expected to rise in tandem with the increase in demand for lithium ion batteries in electric vehicles. You can now buy nickel and cobalt parcels with silver bullion and have a direct price exposure to both battery metals. You have the option to buy 2 ton nickel parcels or 250 kilogram cobalt drums. Every parcel will be fully insured against loss and guaranteed to be genuine by Silver Bullion. Selling your parcels to lock in profits is as simple as logging into your Silver Bullion account, selecting the parcels and clicking sell. Buy your nickel and cobalt parcels now at Silver Bullion's website www.silverbullion.com.sg slash eb and participate in the electric vehicle revolution. Interested but have questions? Email us at sales at silverbullion.com.sg or give us a call at plus 65 6100 3040.